You make one. Okay, so here's the plan. Uh, quickly, quickly, get you going on this stuff. And I assignment. I have a first assignment. I'm I'm going to spend two minutes going through a couple things. It's just a quick review of properties of exponents. Okay, we haven't done it in a while. It's kind of get you back thinking about properties of exponents. I'm going to go through the basic properties now. There are some problems on there where you've got to do things like you've got X is on the top and the bottom, and it's all taken to a power. You probably remember doing that at the very beginning of the year. It's the exact same assignment you did during the review at the beginning of the year. I just want you to do it again, get a little more practice, because what we're going into now is a section that requires you to use the next two units, require you to do lots of stuff with exponents, right? So we got to be kind of remind ourselves how it all works. So very briefly here, x squared times x cubed is what? Good, because when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. Very good. X squared cubed is six. Good, because if you take a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. Good. Uh, what about this one? The quantity two x cubed is what? Okay, good. It's going to be two cubed times x cubed, which is eight x cubed, right? Okay, the moral of the story is when you have a product, not when you're adding or subtracting, but when you have a product, you can distribute the, the exponent to all the pieces. You can break it up into parts, essentially, right? Now, that is very different from this, and I want to, you know, I want to draw a very clear distinction here. If I have something like x plus 2 cubed, that is not equal to x cubed plus 2 cubed, right? I would have to do x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2, right? And what is that? Well, there's a pattern I'm going to show you soon, you know, within the next few days, and you'll kind of be able to do those more easily. But just for now, just know that you cannot distribute when you're adding or subtracting. Like, I could make that a plus or a minus. It doesn't matter. You can't distribute, okay? Uh, what about x to the fifth divided by x cubed. x squared, because if you divide like bases, you subtract the exponents, right? x cubed over x to the fifth. x to the negative 2, OK? But what's our property of negative exponents? x to the negative 2 is the same thing as No, 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 no. Making it too, too complicated. If I have a negative exponent, exponent in the top of the fraction, and where does it go? It goes on the bottom. Right? So a negative on the top. Remember that? Okay. And so we could get there in one step if we wanted to, right? We could, if we wanted to do this one, we could even say something like if I have x cubed over x to the fifth. I showed you a shortcut. Remember this one? Instead of doing both properties, you can just do it in one step. If we keep the x where it has the most power, which is on the bottom, then I just subtract the other x and get it too, right? Okay, while we're on the subject, what if I have something like 1 over, or let's make it even, look at 2. What if I have 2 over x to the negative 4? Yeah, a negative exponent on the bottom becomes positive on top. Positive on the top. So it would be 2x to the positive 4, right? Okay, what about one like this guy here? If I have a quotient to a power, x over 3 squared is going to be what? Yeah, x squared over 3 squared, which is x squared over 9. And then I want to close it up with a really tough one. So I've got the quantity pi times the square root of x plus sine x. That whole quantity to the zero power is zero. No. One. one. Right? Because any base to the zero power is one. The only exception is zero to the zero is over five. Okay, that doesn't really mean it's we'd say it's an indeterminate form of that. Okay? C. Okay, so polynomials. 
the topic for the day, polynomials. That was a little review. Now here's new stuff. Sort of new. You've been doing polynomials for quite a while, you just haven't known. Polynomial. Let's look at the, in math sometimes it helps to, to, to look at the structure of a word, at the origins of a word. What does poly mean? Many. Many. Nomial in math. Name. It's, I mean, it's kind of, because nom is name, isn't it? So it's, in math, I'm not sure how it got to this, but nomio would mean a term. It, it means it's something that's being in separate pieces. Okay, so it's many terms is what polynomial translates to. Okay, so polynomial is just a sum of a whole bunch of terms in math. And to define the rules for a polynomial, we're just going to define the rules for each of the terms. Remember, terms are things that are added or subtracted, right? Factors are things that are multiplied. Terms are things that are added or subtracted. So for each term, there's really just two rules. The exponent of the variable has to be a whole number, so it cannot be negative. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. on forever, right? And the coefficients are real. Now, what's the meaning of the word coefficient in math? Okay, hey, what's with that word? What's the meaning of the word coefficient? Number before the variable. Number before the variable. Whatever's being multiplied by a variable is what we call, what we call a coefficient, right? So the coefficients are real, exponent is a whole number. You've already seen many examples of this. Clear back in unit two, we called that a quadratic trinomial. Well, tri means what? Three. Three. So three terms, right? It's a polynomial with three terms. Yes, ma'am? I don't know if I've heard the numbers. Yeah, exactly. The uh, real, it just needs to not be a square root of Right. It means, real just means no imaginary, so no eyes. And then that's imaginary, it. that's just how you get it. It's just a square Well, the uh, imaginary number would have an i. Right? So any number that doesn't have an imaginary unit i in it is fine. Really? Could, could be a square root, could be i. Okay, where's uh, the uh, You mean imaginaries? Yeah. Square root of a negative number. Yeah. That's just where it Yep. That's that's where. Yep. That's how you. Do, that's that's where. The definition of i remember is the square root of negative one. Okay. So there's a trinomial. There's a polynomial. You've already worked with stuff like that for a long time. Uh, what about binomials? Yeah, we deal with binomials all the time, right? Two. Binomials means two terms. Uh, Soon we're going to learn how to expand out binomials. I already mentioned that to you. Coming shortly to a theater near you, I'm going to show you how to expand out things like any, not any power, but relative. I mean, there is a way you can do it for any integer power or for any whole number power. But we're going to learn a trick for doing, you know, reasonable powers. You know, up through like, and or the n could be seven or eight. Beyond that, you got to use the binomial formula, which is kind of a binomial formula. Binomial expansion, but I'm going to show you a little trick called Pascal's triangle, which is a really slick way to come up with relatively small expansions. You know, things like, like if we wanted to do something like, let's say, x plus three to the fifth. How could you do that without having to go through the huge process of writing out x plus three times itself five times and simplify? That would take a couple pages of work, right, to do. That's a you don't want to do that. I can show you a better trick. Yeah. Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle. That's what you use. That's what you use, Pascal's triangle. Or the binomial thing. But we, we're not going to do that. So then, what about monomials? You've also used monomials without knowing it. Like when we did stuff like I said factor the binomial 3x squared plus, two, plus 15x. What would you do? Remember, if we factor a two-term polynomial like this, all we did, well, we couldn't do anything fancy. All we did was factor out a greatest common factor. And you would have factored out a 3x, right? I distributed a 3x, leaving yourself with, Jane, okay, you would have left, left yourself with an x plus 5. Let's put those away. Right? Okay? So we call that a greatest common factor. It is, but sometimes we would call that a monomial factor. Why monomial? Because it, it satisfies the rules. It passes all the rules or follows the rules of a polynomial. The exponent is a whole number and the coefficients are real, but it's only got one little wimpy term. So mono means one, so we call it a monomial. Okay? Question so far. Right, you get the idea. Okay, but polynomials can be far bigger. And so here's the way we deal with far bigger polynomials. Okay, let's look at this. This is a one-time shot. I'm not going to show this to you again. It looks pretty ugly, but I want you to just understand what this means. This is kind of a 
more of a technical way of describing the template for any possible polynomial. We might call this the standard form of a polynomial. So what does this mean? Well, polynomials, when we write them in standard form, notice that there's a whole bunch of terms here, right? And they're all added together. Each one of those terms consists of a coefficient, which is going to be a, that's just a number that, that's multiplied by x, and then some power of x, okay? So what's the end? Well, when we arrange the polynomials in standard form, we're always going to write them in decreasing order of the power of x. So the biggest power of x is the first term. The next biggest power of x is the next term. And we'll just work our way down until we get down to the wimpy terms at the end. That he, like this one only has an x to the 1, and this one has an x to the 0. So that doesn't even show up. That's just, just a constant, right? Just a number with the x doesn't even show up, OK? N is the biggest power of x, and we call that the degree of the polynomial. So if we're talking about a tenth degree polynomial, it means that the biggest power of x is going to be an x to the tenth, okay? The hundredth degree polynomial, the biggest power would be x to the one hundred power, okay? So the, the term that goes first then, the one with the biggest power of x, we call the leading term, and the leading coefficient is just whatever number sits in front of that, that biggest power of x. So here's the part where this probably looks, you're thinking, well, where are the numbers? That looks like a variable. No, it, it's not meant to. The subscript a sub n, why is it a sub n? All that n is there to do is to say that this is the value of a, meaning the coefficient that we attach to x to the n. That's it. It just stands for some number, whatever the coefficient of x to the n. Here's a sub n minus 1. Well, that's just whatever number gets multiplied by x to the n minus 1. So if x is 7, then n minus 1 would be 6. That would be x to the 6, right? And then we get plus dot, dot, dot. What's that mean? Say it again. Yeah, yeah, following that pattern. Like if I, if, here, I'm going to give you a pattern. 2, 4, 6, 8, dot, 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 100. What did I leave out? And, but, and just even numbers, right? You get the idea. We're just following a, a, a prescribed pattern. I don't want to write it all down, so I'm just going to put this little ellipsis up here that just tells us it, and so on and so forth, right? You get the picture, right? The same pattern. So we're going to go all the way down to the last three terms would be the x squared term, the x to the 1 term, and the x to the 0 term, which is just 1, right? Wait, is there a point where it reduces exploring? They, so then how would they eventually get back up to a2 to back down to a1? Well, they don't. They don't because this is so. So like if n is 100, then this would be n minus 1 would be 99. Okay. And then we'd go 98, 97, all the way down to, you know, 2, 1, 0. It's not negative. It's just no, it can't be negative. Remember, the powers have to be whole numbers. The exponents have to be whole numbers. Right? The coefficients could be anything. Right? The values of a are just, they just mean there's some real number. They're just standing in there for numbers, okay? So here's an example of a polynomial. Then. What's the degree of that polynomial? The yellow one down here. Seven. Seven. Yeah, good. Seventh degree polynomial. What's the leading coefficient? Three. Three. Yeah, the leading yeah. coefficient is the coefficient of the biggest power of x. What's the leading term? Three x to the seventh power. Three x to the seventh. That's it, okay? What's the constant? E. Yeah, and E is, you guys know about the number E? No. It's like pi. It's, it's another naturally occurring number, right? It's just, it's, you know, it's very similar to pi. Uh, and and if you will probably use that. Next year, you'll, you'll see that a little bit in your math classes. This year, maybe, maybe at the end, we'll, I'll show you some stuff related to that. We have a little time. Okay. Why did you change the P of X to F of X? Uh, well... I, this is probably p of x for polynomial. It could be anything. It could be g of x. could be h of x. It doesn't matter how you label the function, what you choose to call it. But it just has to follow the same, to follow the right rules to be a polynomial. Okay. So that's a polynomial, right? It's a second degree polynomial, isn't it? We called it a quadratic equation in standard form. It's really just a second degree polynomial. Okay. So what do we do, do you suppose? 
where are we going with all this stuff? We're talking about polynomials. So eventually we're going to look at what the graphs of polynomials look like. Maybe we can, we can talk about, you know, we can use polynomials to model lots of things in life. They're very useful functions. Uh, but we want to learn how to use them first. So today we're just looking at kind of the arithmetic of polynomials. How do we add, subtract, and multiply polynomials? And it's really easy stuff, but it's not a big deal. Adding polynomials, you could, I don't have to teach you anything. How would I add those up? Like terms. Yeah, why like terms? That's it, right? Just add like terms. Do these parentheses even do anything here? I mean, they're no. sort of up there to indicate that there's a polynomial plus another polynomial. But I don't even need them because the coefficient, the number out in front is a 1. When I distribute that, it doesn't change anything, right? So those, those parentheses are just there for organizational purposes. They don't serve any mathematical purpose, right? Just there to help us see that we got two different polynomials we're adding up. But all I would do is just combine like terms. I'm not even going to do that one. It's so easy, right? Just add like terms. You guys can all do that. This is maybe one step harder. It's still not bad. What if I, I've got this first polynomial minus this one minus that one? What do you think I'm going to do there? Combine like terms, right? But we can make things a little bit easier. Distribute the negative. Distribute the negative, exactly. We don't want to depend on remembering to subtract each term individually. So the easiest thing to do is just distribute the, the negative one and then combine like terms, right? Question, comment. Um, is the, const, the constant always going to be at the end? Yes. Yeah, if it's written in standard form. Yep. Okay, so what would we do then? Well, if I distribute the negatives, that just means I'm going to be changing signs, right? So I'm going to get these, these first four terms stay the same, and then all these other ones here, I'm just going to change the signs and add them. I'm going to distribute this and add the opposites there. Okay, what's the problem with that? That looks like a mess, doesn't it? I mean, that's going to be kind of hard to search for all those like terms, isn't it? Yeah. What if I had, what if I had really big polynomials and lots of them? Right? That's going to be a total mess. So there's a way to organize this that's useful. This is, and this is, it may seem like, okay, this is what we can destroy. This just makes sense. But this is a great idea. It really helps. I can already predict that on these assignments, they're super easy assignments, but it's easy to miss these problems if you're not careful. And here's one way to organize your work so you don't miss them. Add stuff up using vertical columns. Add like terms using vertical columns. So let's take, for example, this first, this first polynomial when we distribute the one, which does nothing. It stays the same. But I, if I look up here, I can see that my biggest power of x is a 4, isn't it? Right? I'm only going to have x to the fourth and smaller powers of x. So when I combine these, I'm going to create a vertical column in my mind for every power of x, right? And I'm going to, even though I don't have an x cubed term there, I'm going to leave a space for it because some of the other polynomials might, right? So there's the green polynomial. Now when I distribute this negative, right, in the next polynomial, all that's going to do is just change the signs, correct? But I'm going to take those terms and I'm going to line them up in the correct columns. And you see the strategy then evolving, don't you? Right? We can just add the like terms vertically, which is easy to keep track of. So I'm going to get a positive 5x cubed. Well, there's a contestant in the x cubed column now. I get an x squared term and I get a constant. And then over here in this last one, I'll distribute the negative to all four terms and change those signs, but I'll be careful to line those up in the correct columns. And then it's easy to go from there. All I've got to do now is just add vertically, right? So this first column, I know I'm going to get an x to the fourth. I just have to add the coefficients to see how many. So positive 1 and negative 8 is negative 7. Right here, I've got x cubes, and I've got positive 5, and negative 1 is positive 4. Right? See how that works? And then I get the answer pretty simply. Okay? Now, what about multiplying polynomials? So multiplying polynomials, you've done that too. Uh, many times, you've multiplied out binomials. Clear back in algebra 1, you did this. And you called it FOIL, right? I don't like FOIL, though. FOIL's not good because FOIL doesn't follow the same kind of pattern you use for bigger polynomials. We want to always do instead of FOIL is we want to take one of the one of the polynomials and we're going to distribute each of the terms to the other one, right? We'd say we're going to distribute one polynomial over the other polynomial, right? So here's an example, bigger one though, right? We can't FOIL this because I got too many terms. 
So we got some options here. Let's, let's think about a wise choice. Let's always try to make our lives easier when we're doing algebra, right? So I could take the first polynomial and distribute each of those four terms to all the parts of the second polynomial. That's option A. Or option, we'll do the vertical thing, you're right. Option B would be I'm going to take each of these three terms and distribute it to the other polynomial. The Which one sounds easier? The three. The three, okay. And it's not like it's a huge difference, but I think it does It does add up. It does, if you these little simple steps, they, they, they make the overall process easier. So let's always just, if they're different size polynomials, meaning the number of terms, always take the smaller one and distribute that over the bigger one, right? So in this case, we're going to start off by distributing the leading term here. So the negative 6x cubed, I'll distribute that to each of those four terms, right? And what do I get? Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend too much time on the process because it's not very hard. But you agree, let's do a couple of them. Negative 6x cubed times negative x to the fourth is positive 6x to the seventh, right? That's going to be our biggest power of x, isn't it? We know it is because I'm taking the biggest power of x in this polynomial and distributing it to the biggest power of x in that one. So that's going to be the column clear over on the left. It's going to be the x to the seventh column. The next term would be negative 6x cubed times negative 4x cubed. Well, negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24x to the sixth. But now notice when I go to the next term, I'm going to get a negative 36x to the fourth. So I skipped over x to the fifth, so I'm going to need a column, right? Okay, now, so we, we do that with the first term. Now we're going to take the second term and do the same thing. We'll take this x and we'll distribute that all the way through all four, right? And what's that going to do? Well, multiplying a polynomial by x is easy. What's it do? So it's like, for example, x times negative, or x times negative 4x cubed is Negative 4x to the 4. It's all it's going to do is going to leave the coefficients the same and just bump all the powers up by 1, right? So that's a pretty easy one to do. And you'll start to see those patterns. So then we're just going to get a negative x to the 5th. So we're going to fill in that gap. We've got a negative 4x to the 4th and so on. We line them up in the right columns. And then finally, we're going to distribute this 6 all the way through. And when we do that, that's what we end up getting, right? Now look how much easier that is to deal with, right? Now I can, I, all the columns are just organized so nicely, I can just add them up vertically and, and get an answer. I've got some certainty I did it right, okay? So once again, like if I'm here, these, these first three terms, there's only one of each, so those are easy to add. I'm just gonna get my 6x to the seventh plus 24x to the sixth, minus x to the fifth. And now look at this one. Here I've got x to the fourth. How many though? Negative 36 and negative 4 is negative 40 and negative 6 is minus 46. Right? Here I've got x cubes. How many? Positive 6 and negative 24 is negative 18. Here I've got only 1x squared term, which is a 6x squared. Here I've got x is 36 and negative 1 is 35, and then a minus 6, and I got it. Okay. So there is one other little trick for this, and you can you can decide whether you want to do this or not. Well, that's you, a just, much. It, well, it, and it's you don't have to, right? But but some people like this. It does, it is pretty compact way to do it. Look what we do here. Okay, so. I'm going to take one of the two polynomials, it doesn't matter which one. I would probably do the, the longer of the two on the top, maybe. And you're just going to make, so it's an x to the fourth, I'm just going to make columns for every power of x, even if I'm missing a power of x. Notice it's missing an x term, so I'm going to have a 0x, right? The coefficient is just 0 if it doesn't show up, right? I'm going to take the other polynomial, and I'm going to align it uh, vertically, right? So instead of one term per column, this one's got one term per row. Same deal, the biggest power of x on the top, and I work my way down. And then all I've got here is like a matrix. I'm just going to be multiplying 
you know, one times one gives me that. So five x to the fourth times negative six x cubed is negative 30 x to the seventh. Negative six x cubed times negative x cubed is positive six x to the sixth. Those two together, right, those two are gonna give me that number. Those two give me zero. Those two give me that number, right? And if I keep working my way down, you're gonna see a pattern starting to unfold. Why did you add the zero x? Because you just need a placeholder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you have to, it has to be there. You have to have that placeholder. So if I keep going, like what if I take this row all the way across? x squared times zero is zero. Okay. Uh, I need a new color. Uh, we got uh, orange. Orange. Oh, I already used that. There's one. So x squared times negative four is negative four x squared. Now what about over here? X times five X to the fourth is five X to the fifth. Uh, somehow I don't have that color anymore. Anyway, you get the idea, don't you? You can see the pattern. Where are the light turns gonna be this time? Yeah, along the diagonals, right? Along the diagonals, we're gonna get all the light turns that we add up, okay? Tick, I mean. Some people like that. I always do it the other way. I just do it with columns. But take a break. All right. We got a little time. We can work.